Right. Well, I'll keep letting people in as they arrive. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to today's info session on the first um, one-time diversity, equity, and inclusion slow business grant information session. Uh, my name is Matthew Melendrez, and I am uh, the DEI Management Fellow uh, here for the year helping with the office. And I'm really honored to be joined by some of my colleagues to uh, provide any information about this grant that you all need. And so with that, I want to turn it over to our new uh, DEI manager, Nestor, who will be giving the presentation, which will be followed up with the Q&A. And so as we as Nestor's going, please jot down um, in the chat any questions you have. But at the end, we'll have substantial time to have any questions that he can answer. And with that, Nestor, I will turn it to you. Thank you so very much, Matthew, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, like Matthew said, my name is Nestor Velos Pasalaco. My pronouns are he, his, and L, and I am the DEI manager for the city of Slo. Today with us, we also have Lee Johnson. Lee, if you don't mind doing a quick introduction, and then I'll move on to with uh, the presentation. Sure. I'm Lee Johnson. I'm the Economic Development Manager for the City of San Luis Obispo. And Molly Kano, who's our Tourism Manager, is also assisting on this project. So we're here to help Nestor, Matthew, the advisory body applicants um, from an economic development perspective in any way we can. Thank you so very much. So with that, I just want to say thank you for everyone being here today. Uh, we're going to go over uh, some background information about the grant, uh, then we're going to be talking about the project plan and uh, the funding criteria for the grant as well, and some examples. Uh, these are not definite examples. There are so many other great ideas out there that you can always uh, type into, and then we're going to go over some of the timeline as well, and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, that being said, um, we can go to the next slide. Um, so what is the background uh, under DEI and economic development, right? So as you all know, uh, the city established the uh, major city goal for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And um, there is a shared effort between as well uh, the Office of Economic Development and Tourism. And then so the city's major city goal on economic recovery, resiliency, and fiscal responsibility outlines uh, the city's uh, effort to support a thriving local economy um, and ensuring that we are continuing to provide support to businesses, arts and culture, downtown vitality, and then practicing fiscal responsibility. Now, the major city goals, uh, our work plans under DEI and as well as economic development and tourism, uh, there is a shared goal and that shared goal was to explore and utilize innovative practices uh, such as microloans and targeted sector recruiting and promotion practices to ensure that we are reaching out to different businesses. So with that, uh, that's how everything kind of came into in inception for the uh, development of the one-time funding of $150,000 for the DEI, uh, a slow business grant that we are reviewing today. Uh, the Human uh, Relations Commission is the one who will be in charge uh, and providing direction to council uh, about the funding allocation once the application period is over. And then the subcommittee under HRC will be reviewing the applications and providing those final recommendations to council. Um, the next slide. So what is the project plan for the DEI Slow Business Grant? Uh, this proposal basically enables the city to leverage uh, the knowledge, expertise, and dedication and credibility of the Human Relations Commissions in establishing a grant program to aid the city's major city goals. And in this case, again, like I mentioned before, is about that shared effort between the Office of DEI and the Office of Economic Development and Tourism. Now, uh, the grants uh, can range from a minimum of $2,500 up to a maximum of $25,000, uh, which uh, will be awarded to businesses uh, that are actually targeting uh, underserved and uh, underrepresented communities. Uh, and obviously all services need to be provided to all individuals coming into the business as well. Um, 
there is that, that, that focus on uh, serving expanding services or accessibility to underserved and underrepresented communities uh, with a goal to increase a sense of belonging, a sense of equity, and definitely creating a uh, welcoming atmosphere for everyone accessing services in the city of Slough. So now what is the funding criteria for the DEI Slough Business Grant? So as you already probably seen a lot of information, uh, applicants must be a business based in the city of Slough with a current business license and be in good standing. Or uh, if the application is for a new business, uh, the applicant must complete the five hours of one-on-one -on -one, uh, small business development uh, center consulting services and secure a business license before they can receive the funding uh, for this grant. Uh, the next funding criteria is that requests must be for activities, services, and other concepts that primarily occur in the city of San Luis Obispo. Third is a funding request must be focused on serving underserved and underrepresented communities. However, all activities, all services, as well as other concepts must be accessible to all individuals in the, in the city. Uh, the fourth uh, funding criteria is a request must be for activities, services, and other concepts with the ability to show measurable impact and or success. So we are definitely paying attention to, for example, what kind of metrics are being built in the funding criteria to determine success in the long term of the one year uh, funding of the grant. And then finally is the final uh, great, uh, criterion is uh, viability and sustainability as a key indicator of the success of the application of the funding in, that, in the business proposal uh, as part of the, uh, of the grant. Next, okay, so what are some of the possible funding requests? And these are just basically ideas that we're putting out there. Uh, uh, we're really looking forward to hear and read, for example, all, the different, all, all, all of the other ideas that your businesses will be putting forward. But some of the examples, for example, include funding uh, to translate and print new menus to enhance uh, accessibility and or provide multilingual options to different clientele coming into your businesses. Another example could be training funds for an esthetician to expand a skincare uh, treatment or routines that they may offer to different uh, customers. Another example could be funding for an additional hairstylist uh, who specializes in diverse hair textures, protective hairstyles. So in, in a sense, diversifying a little bit more of the, uh, of the services being provided to customers. Another example will be expanding menu options for a diverse cultural cuisine, uh, offering different ways to engage clients um, with different dishes. Another item can be uh, funding assistance to start a new business that meets the needs of underserved and underrepresented um, community members. Again, that's, if that's the case, uh, that new business will have to complete the um, SBDC consulting program and secure a business license before prior to getting the funding. And another quick example is um, developing social media campaigns or even printed materials, uh, including signage, uh, to advertise your business in different languages, such as in uh, Spanish or any other language, depending on what is it that you're targeting, um, it to best serve their clientele or customers coming into uh, and, see and seeking services, right? Uh, next, we have the timeline. So um, there was a study session that happened early in the year in January 4th. Uh, then we follow with a HRC vote on the grant project. Um, and then uh, the project now is live. Uh, the application, the grant application is live it's starting February 27 uh, and it's going to close on March 31st at 5 p.m. Um, Starting March uh, 1st, uh, the, sub, the Human Relations Commission will select a subcommittee that will review the uh, proposals. And uh, during the first two weeks in April, uh, the application process of reviewing will take place. 
And then by May 3rd, uh, we'll have a final review and, and recommendation uh, for city council. And on June uh, 6th or 20th, we're aiming for June 6th, we're going to be presenting the final recommendation for uh, council to approve um, the grant proposals uh, for this grant cycle. That being said, that was sweet and short, I wanna say, hopefully easy to understand and hopefully give you certain ideas on what uh, kind of proposals you might want to consider to present to us, but that's all uh, about the DI business grant and now uh, we're open to questions. Hi, uh, let me. I had a quick question. I put it in the can. Is um, there's a few in the chat as well? If you're not seeing. Yeah, me. we just. I just saw the direct message. Thank you. So the first question, Nestor, is: Is this only for San Luis Obispo City or for the county? Uh, okay. This is for San Luis Obispo City. Mm -hmm. There's also the question about uh, nonprofit and for-profit. Um, nonprofits can apply, but the, what they're doing has to help serve the business community to help underserved and underrepresented communities. So if you're going to do training or something like that for businesses, but you're a nonprofit, that kind of thing would work. But it is about the business community and expanding service to underrepresented and underserved people. Thank you, Lee. Mm -hmm. Um, my, uh, I have a question. You can ask. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so award amounts minimum twenty five hundred, max twenty five thousand. What are what are you guys really looking for to um, Matt like um. Is there a certain community of people you want to see more money go to? Is there a certain service that you're hoping? I don't know if you guys can say it, but um, what what would we do? Can you give us advice to get twenty five thousand? Uh, Lauren, that's a great question. Uh, I I can tell you that what we're looking forward. Um, to see where the funding is gonna go is going to be about expanding services to any community. To be honest, the ideas, the different proposals, um, um, they will target different communities, they will target different underrepresented and unserved groups, but uh, we, wanna, we wanna see the value of those applications definitely, and ultimately the HRC is the advisory body who will review those applications and uh, move forward with recommendations. There is no particular formula. There is no specific items that we would say that this is the right way to ap apply for it to get up to uh, the maximum amount of dollars. Um, what I would suggest is just uh, writing something that you are passionate ab about, uh, that you see that will have a great impact in the community, that will definitely support underrepresented and underserved groups, and that in the long term will be a great experience not only for the business, but also that will continue to uh, have a larger impact in the structure of how we provide businesses in the city of Slow. Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> Hi, can I ask a quick question? I'm Alexandra from Tolosa Children's Dental Center. And you had some great examples of, you know, uh, making menus more accessible to people. Do you all have any um, resources for that? We have a lot of materials, but that we only have them really in one language. And there's two languages that we need help with. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't at this point, uh, but if you, I mean, my suggestion would be even considering the way that you are trying to reach out to different community members in those particular other languages that you're talking about might actually be a particular, um, the grant proposal in itself uh, in identifying, uh, you know, who might be the proper uh, collaborator that you want to work with to make that happen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lean on to Matthew and see if he had any suggestions on these as well. Thank you. 
Yeah, I would agree the same. Like, even my first thought um, is, like, I know in Santa Cruz, they have a distant virtual um, Spanish learning program for medical language. And so that can even be an example of like, we want to, we have so, certain people who we know have some basic language skills in Spanish, and we want to enhance that language. Here's the program, here's the cost, this is how it will impact our, our business going forward and serving underserved people. And so that could be kind of one example of how you can kind of go about a grant request. I, I would also say that on the translation services, a couple of the different printing companies in town and the web service companies definitely have translation services that they use, and they can give you an estimate to translate a various, if you give them the, the materials you have, they'll give you an estimate on that, then you can include that mm -hmm. estimate with your um, submittal. Yeah. And there's a couple of questions in the chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll get to those. Oh, you, you got it? Yeah, I'm going to go in order real quickly, just okay. so we don't miss one. And then we'll go to the ones who have hands raised. Uh, this so one question is, this is different from the grants and aid slow city grant program. Yes, it is. Um, so just just real quickly, we have several grants now that are housed under the DEI office and the HRC. And so one of them is the the GIA um, that's now called the human services grant that one we're actually in the middle of um, doing our recommendations for council. We have the DEI high impact grant that is for uh, nonprofits. And then we have the DEI slow business grant. So yeah, we have more grants going on, which is great. But yeah, if you're feeling like, well, which grant is which, it's totally okay. Great that we have more grants, but there is a lot. Um, the next question, what is the total of funding going out in this grant cycle? 150,000 will be the total amount that's allocated um, out to the different applications. Um, another question, is this funding only for first comes, um, first serve until the funds are gone, or is it based on the application and the decision goes for who will best serve? Great question. Um, there's a lot of different models to go about grants. This one is going to be, we won't even really look at them until March 31st when they're all done, then we'll look at all of them at once. We have two grant readings and the subcommittee from the Human Services, um, the Human Relation Commission, they have a subcommittee and they review it and then they um, we'll look at the criteria funding. So everything that you saw that Nestor presented here, that's also on the website, and that's also kind of embedded in the application. The application, each application will be measured up against that. Like, does it fit the criteria? Does it have all the requirements of the application? And from that, all the ones that fit that, the subcommittee is then going to look at how to distribute the funds. And so, um, yeah, it's not a first come, first serve. Um, and so, yeah, the subcommittee really tries to look at every single word of every single application and measure every single, and then that's part of the reason too, we ask for a project financial big breakdown, because sometimes they might be like four aspects to a project or multiple projects and the subcommittee might uh, identify this project really fits the criteria of what we're going for. Um, this one doesn't, so we're going to partially fund. Um, so that's nothing too. In your applications, the more details you give and how the finances would break down, the better, because that will open up more opportunities for partial funding. Um, if there's aspects of, of um, it's also just rare. It's not, you know, it's not very, no, I shouldn't say rare. Um, the like not every every awardee will have their full their project fully funded. It'll be part. Sometimes it's pro, uh, parts of the project. Sometimes it could be the whole thing. Um, and then from there, I want to go, there were some questions and then I'll go back to the chat because there was questions before the, the chat started going up again. So I will pause before I answer um, what a marketing campaign. That's the next question we'll answer. But if I think I saw Chantal uh, hands up. Yeah, yes, the question. Thank you. I actually, oh, I you asked the question. In the chat. Oh. I gave you a double whammy. <laughs> yeah. Do you also want to ask it? Um, so yeah, basically, I'm just wondering if, um, I guess, would it be appropriate use of the grant funds for kind of a marketing campaign to help reach those clients and underserved groups? Um, I think, and that's one of the hardest things is for us to draw maybe those clients. And so maybe this could be an opportunity for that. Yeah, Nestor, do you want to answer that? Yes. Uh, so actually, yeah, that was one of the examples that we provided. So a marketing campaign using different um, uh, languages or anything that may be particularly culturally and um, linguistically appropriate for the groups that you're trying to reach uh, would, for example, qualify as a grant proposal as well. 
and then any of the print materials or anything else that you, you want to add as part of your social media campaigns uh, that is part of that piece will also work to uh, as an example of a, a, a funding request. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. We have another question in the chat. What if a nonprofit wanted to translate specific documents? What would that be considered in this grant? I'm trying to understand more of the appropriate uses in terms of nonprofit. It's a good question, yeah. So, so from, you know, just from my perspective, the, it depends on the use of those documents. If it, if it is to then better serve businesses or the business community who would serve the underserved communities, that could work. If it is only about like the nonprofit translating that for their own activities, they're not related to like economic development or business growth or, you know, getting underserved communities. To, if you're a nonprofit that helped underserved or helps companies or people start businesses and you want to translate your materials into stuff that into languages that would get more people to come to learn how to open a business, yeah, that kind of thing would make sense. Is that I hope that helps Lupita. If not, feel free to to ask away. I'll add just one, just a little bit more, just from a grant reading perspective to make that application a lot stronger. Is I would suggest identifying a business or like in the application that you've already spoken to who has a need for that, because I think that will be a stronger application than maybe um, uh, a like a. A nonprofit saying, hey, this is a service that we want to offer, but there's no necessary plan for that. Um, that's where I can see those two, those are very different application reads. And so the more, if you're a nonprofit, because and again, if we have 1.6 million requests and have 150,000 to give out, um, there probably there's going to be some like ways that we have to kind of weigh all of that. And so the more information, especially if you're a nonprofit applying for this grant that's geared towards businesses, um, the more that you can include in that and identify ahead of time, um, the much more of a robust application you'll have. Yes, yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? Do you have DEI and economic development? For those who didn't hear the intro, you have DEI, the Office of DEI and the Office of Economic Development both present here. So if there's any questions, um, any big or small question, feel free to ask during this time. I, I made have the a presentation short so we can be open. Yes, Lauren. Um, <clears throat> do you guys offer counsel prior to application middle? Like, could I make an appointment with both entities and like kind of talk in private? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can definitely reach out to us before the 31st. Um, and that's open to anyone who's here, anyone who's watching this after the fact. Um, we want to be able to help to, to help um, every application be robust and comprehensive and uh, make sure that everything's included. Please don't forget to make all your attachments. I just need to emphasize that too. Um, if you do not include all the attachments, your, your application will be incomplete and will not be reviewed. But so up until the 31st at five, um, we are able to help um, just like give some insight and in how to make a strong application. But once that moment, um, once it's turned in, we can't be asking, um, helping the application other than clarifying questions um, within the application, but nothing that's going to help um, advance the application once it's closed. Um, and also just um, encourage people to uh, uh, try to apply and get their application in uh, before the last uh, half day of the last day, because sometimes we run into technical issues, or maybe there's something missing, and that gives us an opportunity to look at it. But if you're if if someone's turning an application at 4:55 and there's something wrong with it, that kind of creates um, a problem for that application if we can't fix it by five o'clock. And the other piece I would just want to comment really quick is uh, there are three attachments that you make you have to make sure to add. Just also make sure that those pieces are added in there. And then if for some reason uh, your web browser is not working um, or it's the application is giving you uh, issues to submit uh, the entire application, I would recommend to also use different browsers just in case. Um, uh, the system can sometimes be a little bit finicky, but uh, it should work pretty good at this point. So, but if you were to have any uh, questions in regards to uh, making sure that the application was submitted or anything of this sort, you know, 
you, you can always contact us. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll stay on for a few more minutes um, if you know to ask answer any other questions either in the chat or here but um, but we really are looking forward to reviewing all the all the different businesses and nonprofits that apply and to see the ways that we can see DEI um, intersect all the businesses in our community and really help make the city a better place of belonging for everybody. And so um, good luck in writing all your applications. Again, feel free and please will encourage, email us to set up an appointment to go over aspects of your application. And, um, but yeah, we'll stay on for another five more minutes or so. Um, and if there's no more questions, we'll close the meeting. But uh, thank you for everyone who came to this meeting. And please get the word out. Yeah, get, get your friends and other colleagues and people who own businesses spread the word about this grant program. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Um, it's Lauren. Hey, Lauren. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, could I possibly make a, an appointment now? Yeah, it, just for the, because we're going to be putting this Zoom on the website. So if you can just email the DEI office immediately and oh. we'll, we'll, we'll make sure to get that on the calendar as soon as possible. Oh, you, um, I can put it in the chat. Oh, in the chat, you'll put it. Okay. It's, it's also helpful with those emails to give us some idea of the questions that you have, um, because that then we're much more prepared for the meeting. That kind of thing is, is really helpful. Okay, thank you. And, and, and Nestor's phone number and email is also on the website. So if you don't, for those who are watching this, if you don't have access to the chat, can't see it, you can also look on our website and Nestor's information, email and phone number are on that website. All right, if there are no more questions for those who are remaining, um, I'll just give one last call and if not, we'll, we'll end this meeting. Thank you for your presentation and time. Looking forward to work with you. Bye bye. Thank you, Lauren. Bye. All right, I think we have three more people still in the meeting. Um, just last opportunity to ask any questions. And if not, I'm going to close out the meeting. All right, and for those who are watching, thank you for watching this. You know, at any point, um, again, if you need to email us or call us for any clarifying questions, um, please feel free to reach out. And we look forward to reading everyone's applications and helping everyone um, through this program. So thank you for everyone who attended, or if you're watching this after the fact, thank you for watching this. And uh, thank you, yeah, we'll, we'll be done with today's meeting. Bye everyone. Thank you.